You talked about how poverty now has very individualized features and how overall what was achieved by, let's say, trade unions post-World War is no longer applicable. We, we live in a different world. So because we live in a different world, I'm curious how you view the role of technology to help close sort of this gap between learning and the applicability of learning to job skills. And I'm thinking here things like educational software that can catch up kids to the level they're at because we just put kids of the same age in one classroom, but that doesn't mean they're at the same level. And that happens even in the Western world. It's not just in, in low-income countries. So how do you see maybe recent technology devel developments, maybe partnering with the private sector to help in some of these countries close some of these educational gaps? So let me say that actually I had a view on this pre-COVID and now I have a post-COVID view that has somehow evolved. But pre-COVID, having spent uh, so much time in classroom where there were teachers that were absolutely inadequate, I would have been of the view that a good plasma screen with uh, a remote teacher that was capable and competent uh, would have been better than having a teacher in person um, who have very little to teach. After having gone through COVID and seen the impact of remote learning on our children, I actually have changed this view slightly. And uh, I think that nothing replaced the personal interaction that happens in the classroom because there is much more than just transferring notions and transferring learning. There is the fact that, you know, the, the, the school really becomes a place where there is interpersonal aggregation. So, but having said that, I think that because in uh, many of our developing countries, and in particular fragile states, um, there is going to be a gap of decades between, particularly if the push to enrollment continues the way that we would like to see it going, and the demographics that are obviously playing against, you think about countries in the Sahel or Ethiopia or Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is going to double in the next 20 years his, uh, you know, school population. And uh, academically trained teachers take a much longer time to be produced. And so there is always going to be, there is going to be a growing gap between children and teachers. So what you uh, can use technology is really to supplement uh, in a sense that you can have a good cohort of teachers that are trained in the basic without having to fall to go through the whole process of the TTIs. And then you have some technology support that helps them, um, you know, go for the most difficult part. I think particularly science, technology, math, uh, things that are badly needed for the future of jobs and that uh, somehow are so difficult for teachers to, uh, you know, to, to become proficient in. And so I think that that is one part. Obviously, there is a big, uh, you know, uh, hardware infrastructure, uh, you know, gap that in certain areas, even that is not possible. And I think about remote areas of northern Ethiopia, of Uganda, of so many parts in Africa or the Sahel, where really, uh, you know, you first need to have the network in place for all these things to actually, uh, you know, be able to be exploited with their full potential. So uh, I was very uh, happy to see years ago that the World Bank, for example, launched this, uh, you know, big push on uh, bridging the digital divide because that is really something that will allow so many things to uh, to unleash. But uh, in the meanwhile, there are many, uh, you know, things that are provided in Africa outside of education to farmers, to traders, to people through their cell phone. And so why not thinking about what can be offered to students uh, through their telephone? Uh, and I think that that is a good beginning. But obviously, the moment that the digital divide is filled, then there is much more that can be done. And I have to say that the private sector companies, our technology company, are a 
very keen, very, very keen to support education institution uh, working on apps, technologies, methodologies, processes, etc., etc., that can actually support the more mainstream learning. So I am optimistic on that.